Good afternoon. I received this word from the Lord on Friday, so yesterday, March 8th, 2024, at 4.39 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when asked what he wants this titled, he said, Lawlessness on an Unprecedented Scale. I asked who this is for, and he said, to my children, my chosen, my elect, my bride. Uh, before I go any further, the Bible says that we are to test every spirit. That means that you do not just hear something and take it at face value or just believe everything that you hear, but you are to take it back to the Lord in prayer and say, God, is this coming from you, Lord? If this word is coming from you, is there anything that I need to know to uh, make preparations, to prepare for what's coming? That being said, this is what the Lord said. Thus says the Lord of hosts, a time of lawlessness is coming, a time of complete rebellion against authority having their consciences seared as with a hot iron and an inability to distinguish between good and evil, right and wrong, violent attacks will not be uncommon. They will be random and uninstigated in the eyes of the victims. They will be vicious and without any remorse. When law enforcement comes to subdue the perpetrators, they will be met with great resistance and brutality. People will have no respect for authority. They will berate and threaten those apprehending them. Parents will get into vicious fights over simple disagreements regarding their children. Children will assault their parents and have no remorse about their actions. Fits of rage will break out in traffic over minor offenses frequently. Fights will break out in the grocery stores, classrooms, cafeterias, public restaurants, gas stations, beaches, and public pools. People will begin to feel as if no place is safe. Many will develop agoraphobia, refusing to go out in order to avoid future conflicts. There will be many incidences of arson where homes, apartment complexes, and even police precincts will be set on fire. This will become the norm. People will be highly unpredictable in a good mood one moment and a murderous rage the next. You must remain in me. You must be filled with and led by my spirit. You must not let the darkness you see around you steal your praise. You must not let the sun go down on your anger. You must give no opportunity to the devil. You must take every thought captive that doesn't align with my nature, my principles, or my word. You must continue to be sanctified by the hearing and doing of my word. You must not be ignorant of the devil's schemes. You must be sober and watchful. You must not grow weary in your well-doing. And if you start to feel that way, you must run to your first love. You must come to me immediately. At the onset of a weary and a downcast soul, you must focus on heavenly things, remembering that you are only sojourners on the earth and that heaven is your home. You must not conform to the ways of the culture. You must practice righteousness and he emphasized this part, seek it out. You must walk worthy of the call. You must do everything as unto me. You must fix your face like a flint, turning not to the right or the left. You must always walk in love. You must not judge those on the outside. You must remember that you too were once lost and without hope and hostile towards me. Aliens towards my covenant and strangers of doing what is right. You must exhibit mercy. You must let your light so shine that those who see your good works will glorify your Father in heaven. You must remain thankful. You must testify often. 
Do not hesitate to tell someone the reason for the hope that is in you. You must be fruitful. You must grow in your knowledge of me. You must seek wisdom and ask for it. You must not fear or be discouraged. You must acknowledge me in all of your ways. You must seek peace and pursue it. You must not, he also emphasized that, shrink back. For the cowardly will not inherit my kingdom. You must overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. You must give light to everyone in the house. You must be separate. You are in the world, but you are not of it. You are a citizen of heaven, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. There were quite a few confirmations, so the Lord wants me to share every single one of them with you. He started with just um, short verses or even key words. So the first one was in Jeremiah thirty-three sixteen. It was the words, the Lord is our righteousness. Hosea chapter 8, just these words, sound the alarm. Isaiah 42 9 just this part and now I will prophesy again I will tell you the future before it happens Hosea chapter 9 verse 9 the things my people do are as depraved as what they did in Gebeah long ago God will not forget he will surely punish them for their sins the key words in 2nd Chronicles 29 were fierce anger in 2 Chronicles 28, without mercy, disturbed. And the, these words, back to back, your own relatives turned against you. He told me to go back a page. I went to 2 Chronicles 26. He brought me to the word burn. He had mentioned arson in this word. He brought me to the word furious, raging. And right after that, suddenly broke out and the next one but the people continued in their corrupt ways he told me to go back a page again to second chronicles 25 he brought me to the key words very angry in a great rage crimes and fight on the same page second chronicles 24 he said just these words the prophets warned them but still the people would not listen Deuteronomy chapter 33 he brought me to the word again burning travels I heard the word driving in traffic as I was reminded that he mentioned that there would be road rage frequently he brought me to the word safety I heard no place is safe which the Lord declared in this word he brought me to Genesis chapter 8 to the word burnt again the human race and bent toward evil right after it he brought me to Genesis chapter 9 verse 5 and I will require the blood of anyone who takes another person's life if a wild animal kills a person it must die and if anyone who murders a fellow human and anyone who murders a fellow human must die the rest are all biblical confirmations there were quite a few um, I would encourage you at your own leisure to look them up. 2 Timothy 3, 1-4 1 Timothy 4, 1-2 John 15, 4 Galatians 5, 16 Hebrews 13, 15 Ephesians 4, 26-27 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 John 17:17 17, 17, James 1:22 2 Corinthians 2:11 1 Peter 5:8 Galatians 6:9 Revelation 2:4 Psalms 42:11 Matthew 11:28 to 29 Colossians 3:1 First Chronicles 29, 15, Romans 12, 2, Matthew 6, 33, 1 John 3, 10.
1 Thessalonians 2.12, Colossians 3.23, Isaiah 57, Ephesians 5.2, 1 Corinthians 5.12, Ephesians 2.11-12, Luke 6.36, Matthew 5.16, 1 Peter 3.15 Matthew 3.10 2 Peter 3.18 James 1.5 Joshua 1.9 Proverbs 3.5-6 Psalms 34.14 Revelation 21.8 Revelation 12.11 Matthew 5, 14 to 15, 2 Corinthians 6, 17, John 15, 18 to 19, and 1 Peter 2, 9. Every single Bible confirmation that I just read to you is something the Lord referenced in this word.